All right, why don't you try these bond rotation exercises? So take this molecule on the top and rotate 180 degrees along the C2, C3 bond. And then take this bottom molecule and rotate it, it 180 degrees along the C2, C3 bond. So work on it by yourself. Press pause. And when you're ready, press play. All right, so let's look at this first example here. So we've got carbon 1, carbon 2. We're going to rotate 180 degrees along the C2 to C3 bond. Now, where is that? C2, C3 bond is right here. And if you watch some earlier videos about the sort of steering wheel analogy, you remember that carbon is always tetrahedral in the case of uh, sp3 hybridized carbon, which this is. It's a simple alkane. It's, it's pentane. And it might help to remember or to, to draw kind of a circle connecting each of these, these bonds. And again, think of this as kind of like our steering wheel. And this bond between carbon 2 and carbon 3 is the shaft or the axis about which we're going to rotate our steering wheel. Now, we're being told that we have to rotate carbon 1 180 degrees. So what that means is that imagine that this is, this is part of your steering wheel and you're going to basically rotate it. Let's say we're rotating it this direction. It's going to, as soon as you rotate it, this direction is going to become a little bit of a, it's going to go from being in the plane of the page to being a little bit of a wedge. Okay, and then a wedge, 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 until it gets to here in which it becomes in the plane of the page again. And so, like I said, if you imagine, actually, let's just think back to what that might look like if we were looking at it edge on. So it would be at, at six o'clock. And then imagine that we are rotating it this direction. And so 180 degrees would make it now at 12 o'clock. Okay, 12 o'clock. And that means that, you know, this is at 2 p.m. and this is at 10. So now this is at 4 and this is going to be at 8. So let's just actually redraw what that would mean here. So this is now going to be, instead of being down at 6 o'clock, which is where it was before in the plane of the page and pointing down, it's actually going to be in the plane of the page and pointing up. And so then we, let's just redraw this a little bit. So then we've got C2 to C3 bond and C4 and C5. And so then we've got this bond between this line between carbon 2 and carbon 3. This doesn't change. And just like in originally this H, and let's call this HA. HA, if we looked at it from this direction, HA would be at 2 p.m. And when we rotate it, uh, it's actually going to become at 8 p.m. And if we look at this straight on, this is actually going to be um, HA is going to be a dash here. So H, HA is going to be a dash. And HB, which we can call up here, HB starts off at 10 p.m. And if we rotate this 180 degrees, HB ends up at 4 p.m. And as we look at it from this direction, um, so if we looked at it from this direction, going this way, then this HB would be on our right. It would be at about 4 p.m. Okay, and carbon 1 would be at 12 p.m. So this is what the molecule would look like if we rotated it 180 degrees along the C2 to C3 bond. All right, so let's look at this bottom example. So let's rotate this along the C2 to C3 bond. Here we don't have any tetrahedral carbons to worry about. These are, this is a completely flat molecule. And this is a little bit like a hinge. Here's our, here's our axis. We're going to rotate along the C2 to C3 bond. So it's a little bit like a hinge. We're going to basically rotate this alkene, let's say carbon 1. It can freely rotate around C2 to C3. Remember, it can't rotate along 1, one and 2 or 3 and 4, but it can rotate around 2 and 3. So we're going to rotate this. Um, just like we'd rotate a hinge. So if we kind of looked at this edge on, it might look something like, like this. And we're going to rotate this 180 degrees until it's actually in line with the uh, alkene. Both alkenes are in the same plane. So it's going to look like this. We've got our hinge here. 
Now we're saying that we're rotating carbon one. Now you get the same answer if you rotated carbon carbon four. It doesn't it doesn't really matter for us, but it's also going to be in the plane of the page, and it's going to look like this. So four, three, two, and one. So we have. Uh, a molecule where now both alkenes, note, are on the same side of the carbon two to carbon three bond. Whereas before, uh, the alkenes were on opposite sides of the C2 to C3 bond. So this nomenclature doesn't become important until much later, but um, might somewhere store in the back of your mind, this is called S trans because they're trans along this sigma bond. So the S is for sigma. And this is called S cis, where these alkenes are on the same side of the sigma bond so that s stands for sigma and these are conformations so that we can freely rotate between these two but this comes important in a, a very important reaction in, in organic chemistry too when you get there